Uh, there we go. So we've got a poll up. The poll is, which of the recipes are you most excited about seeing made tonight? You've got five choices. Also a little question about what Thermomix you have. Is it a white TM6 or black TM6 or is it one of our vintage models? Um, and then what's most important to you when it comes to cooking? This is just so that we can get to know you a little bit better um, before we crack into the cooking. So while you are um, answering the poll, um, I just want to tell you about a cool special offer that we have at the moment. So a current host reward is a uh, spare bowl blade lid. So for those of you who have a spare bowl blade lid, you will know that having an extra bowl is almost as good as having a second Thermomix. Um, and tonight, some of our team leaders will actually be talking into why you need a second bowl. If you've hopped on tonight with two friends, then you may be able to unlock the special host reward. You do have to reach out to your consultant though and tell them who the two people were that you hopped on with because they have to do some back end paperwork. Um, and just for hopping on with those two friends, you're going to get that special price. And if one of your friends may makes the very wise decision to invest in a Thermomix, then you are actually going to get an incredibly special um, price on that host reward. So I'm just going to stop sharing um, and I'm going to end the poll and then I'll just show you the results before we start cooking. So let's see, what is everybody most excited to see tonight? Looks like the Easter cream pastries. That's actually what I'm most excited to see. Um, Yep, good. Excellent. Well, hopefully we're going to surprise and enthrall you. Most of our attendees tonight have a white TM6. Some of you managed to nab a black TM6 before they sold out. Um, and then a couple of TM5s still in there. Some people who don't own a Thermomix yet, yet being the operative word. Most important time, we always find that. And then second uh, health. So thank you so much for participating in that little poll. Um, let's get cracking with the cooking. Before we start, down the bottom there is a chat box. So please feel free to be chatty because the chattier you are, the better this class is going to be. So let's practice, guys. Name and where you are from in New Zealand in the chat box. Um, also down bottom left-hand side, there is a mute button. Please make sure you're on mute because otherwise everybody will hear you and not the people cooking, that will be embarrassing. Um, and then up top right hand corner, there's a view button. You can change it from speaker view to gallery view. I'd go speaker view just because it means the person who is speaking will be in the big box. We do have closed captions on um, because we do have um, some deaf consultants and deaf customers who are joining us tonight. Uh, so I know sometimes the translation is a bit iffy, but we're just gonna run with it. So. Who is cooking first? Team leaders are going to have to remind me. Oh, Haley's waving at me. Excellent. I'll grab the run sheet. Haley, I would love for you to introduce yourself and let us know what you're cooking tonight. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Haley Berenson, and I am the team leader here in the Y Care Show. Um, I have been with Thermomix for just around two years now. Um, I joined to earn a TM6 because I was a TM5 owner. Decided I would join, earn that, and I'd be gone. And here I am all these months later, um, and now I'm a team leader. So it's just so fun. I cannot stop. So um, I'm going to be making scotch eggs tonight. Please bear with me if I have to step away to cough or something, because I'm actually um, at home in isolation at the moment, and I'm still kind of just coming, coming right from that. So like a little bit coffee still. Um, but I'm making the scotch eggs, which I put my hands up to do because these are hands down one of my favorite foods in the world. When I was a kid and my mum would say, what do you want me to make for your birthday dinner? I would always say scotch eggs, much to her disgust because she hates them. So this is a new recipe for me though. So let's give it a go and see um, how they compare to what I'm used to. So um, the first thing we obviously need to do is pop some eggs on to cook for the middle. Um, it does call for six eggs, but as you only have five and being stuck in isolation, it was just a hassle to go down the road to get one egg. So we're going to go with five. So we're just going to pop those straight into the bowl. And we're going to pop some water in um, just to the uh, one litre line. So if you're not aware, um, on this side of the Thermomix bowl, 
Um, there is actually a mark for one litre and two litre in the max mark. So you just want to go roughly to the one litre line. I'm just slightly short, two seconds. So Katie's saying she can't see you. Hayley, um, Katie, I'm pretty sure everybody else can see Hayley. So I'm going to get you to change from um, gallery view to speaker view. That might help. Cool. So we've got the water in. So we're just going to pop that lid on. And um, it brings up the egg boiler mode. So this is one of my favorite features of the Thermomix because every time without fail, you're going to get those perfectly cooked eggs to be how you want them to be cooked. Um, so this recipe is asking us to select medium. So all we do is turn that around to medium um, and that's going to sit aside and do its thing and get those eggs perfectly cooked for us. And it says approximately 12 minutes. So, so for those of you who, um, I, who love the egg boiler mode, because I know I do, what's your preference for how you like your eggs cooked? Do you like them soft, medium <coughs> or hard? That's what I want to know. No Hayley does not have the um, blade cover peeler in um, because egg boiler mode is perfectly safe to have those eggs around the blade. Right, so while those eggs are cooking, we are actually going to head across to Kerry. And Kerry, you can tell everybody Hello. what you're making. Hello, my name is Kerry. I'm Kerry. Okay, I'm a <laughs> this is I'm a private a joke, guys, because the last cooking class we did, Kerry freaked out, and I said, introduce yourself, and she said, hi, my name's Kerry, and I'm a woman. <laughs> so she's making sure she doesn't repeat that one. Okay, today I'm going to make the Easter cream pastry, but um, I'm actually known as a shoe, a shoe pastry queen, so I know how to make really good one. And when I check on the cookie dough, I realize I want to alter it into my own recipe. So what I do is I just go to the same recipe and I will just go down and I add this and I can just add to created recipe. So from here, I can just edit the recipe, what I want to add in and how many water and the grams. And so what happened is with this cream pastry, it doesn't call for any milk, it's just water. And with extra five, uh, extra one egg. So this recipe calls for something five something eggs. So what I do is I minus the egg to four, but I add in some milk. So from here, I can actually edit my recipes. And this is the beauty of cookie dough. So long story short, I'll quickly tell you and show you how to make this cream pastry. I have already weighed everything in and I preheat the oven to 200 grams. Uh, degree. So I'll just add in everything that I need. So with shoe pastry, it's really, really easy. All you need is you add in the milk, the water, the sugar, the salt that was needed, the butter. And just put it in because I put everything in already. Just five minutes at 100 degree at speed one. So here, depending how cold is your milk, the the beauty, uh, the secret to really fluffy light pastry is you really need to have hot boiling liquid, really really high heat boiling. So what I normally do is I put on five minutes at 100 first, just to go on, and after five minutes we'll see how hot it is because we need to be like really boiling. Then you can add in the flour. I love that. And I love yeah. that you have taken this recipe, Kerry, and then you've actually made some modifications and made it your own. And so what we will do, guys, is in the Facebook event, we're actually going to pop this modified recipe that Kerry has um, created for us so that you guys will be able to recreate this at home. Mm -hmm. Now, Kerry, that's heating up for five minutes. What do you normally do when you've got a five-minute break and your Thermomix is cooking? So this time, I'll normally, I'll actually prepare the fillings. Yep. I'll, I'll cut up the fruits. So everything is it's really simple because it's so easy. It's so easy. Like, I have nothing to do. And the beauty of shoe pastry in a Thermomix is because it's controlled temperature. So you have to, once the dough is really cooked, you need to add in one egg by each time, but the dough has to be down to 60 degrees. How do we know that? Here shows you. It's amazing. I love that, that temperature control. It's pretty clever. 
So while that is heating up, I'm going to introduce you guys to Ruru. So Ruru, tell us about you and tell us what you're cooking. Hi everybody, my name is Ruru. Uh, good evening. And uh, <laughs> I've gone blank. I'm one of the Oakland team leader as well. So uh, it was uh, such an honor to be here for everybody uh, to be prepared your Easter. So hopefully you will learn something out of here today. And I've been in this business more than uh, nearly five years now. And the June are going to be my fifth year. Um, it's amazing. It's an amazing journey. If you choose, um, I, I just heard someone says, um, if you choose, um, if you find the right job, you don't work a single day. That was amazing last so week. Yeah, so true. I, I am in that position. I am busy, but I don't feel like I'm working a single day. That was really yeah. okay. And today I'm gonna cook the real cross buns. So this recipe has not existed before in Kukiru. It's only like, it's quite new, frankly quite new from last year. And then I used to use the recipe hot cross bun, but it's, um, I feel it's a bit dry, but this one is absolutely amazing. And tonight, tonight I'm gonna show you some tricks as well. So first we just start cooking. And then, so at the beginning, we need to weigh uh, 130 grams of the butter to cut it up. So all you have to do, just take out the measuring cup and then put the, any of the containers on and then you can start to measure your, um, your butter. So just tear the machine, it's very easy, right? So back to the old days, you probably had need another weight machine to do that and because we have ceramics so it got everything in it so now we just put the liquid in 200 gram so tear that so i have to let you see my bowl actually i did uh granted my spice before but i just leave it as dirty it is because i'm gonna this spice gonna go to the dough anyway so i don't need to wash it or do anything about it so if you want to grab something, just any of the spice, just use speed 10. It's easy. So we we'll just put the milk in. I am dairy free, so I use a coconut milk you, um, rather than milk. So it's perfectly fine with this recipe. So 50 grams of sugar. I'm, I'm Asian. I don't eat that much sugar. So <laughs> I just put 30 gram. That's my maximum for that. So uh, for the yeast, a two and a half teaspoon. This is the perfect size for two and a half teaspoon. So all you have to do is pour everything in. So we pour everything. If you're new to this machine, make sure you pour on the edge of it, not pour on the on the top of the blade. Otherwise, it will mix. Well, so next step, Oops. put the cup on, put the lid on, and then it will tell you two minutes, 37 degrees and speech. And that 37 degrees, it's really a gold because it controls the temperature. It won't kill your yeast. It make your yeast very active in the right temperature and make your dough uh, rise way faster than the normal, uh, normal other media machines. So there it's are better. quite a few different um, hot cross bun recipes on cookie dough at the moment. So this is the brioche, which um, as Ruru said, this is an improvement on the normal recipe because it has the butter and the eggs, so it's a much richer dough. Uh, there is the chocolate hot cross buns. They're really good. There is actually a whole collection of hot cross buns now, and one of the um, recipes is a savory jalapeno and cheese hot cross bun. And I was a little bit skeptical, but it is actually delicious. And so I reckon it would be great with uh, fried eggs and some bacon on Easter morning. What's your favorite hot cross bun, Ruru? Which is your favorite um, one? At the moment, I really enjoy this one, Rioche. The because what happened is uh, I, I learned from the masters. Um, I soaked the raisin last night use a rum. Beautiful. I love it. I am a rum and rum and risen for ice creams, and this one is like next level so beautiful and then oh, the reason is not after you bake it and it smells so good and there's no alcohol okay it's definitely uh safe to eat because my son went to school today he had wine he said mom that 
It's incredible. It's so good. So Lou is asking, and I don't know the answer to this. So if anybody knows the answer, please feel free to pop it in the chat box. She's saying she knows there's a gluten-free hot cross bun recipe, but she's wondering if we could just use gluten-free flour in this recipe, whether it would work. I'm not sure. It won't. It yeah. won't. You probably have to add some of the um, bumps in it. I think Esther is a uh, yeah. Right. So Ask her. Esther might know. Esther does a lot of gluten-free baking. Do you know Esther? Can you? What's the best gluten-free hot cross bun recipe? Hi, um, I haven't actually made. Uh, actually, I did try gluten-free hot cross buns last year, but um, they came out a bit like bricks. Oh no, um, that's not I good. Actually refined the recipe yet? Okay, so we'll we'll have to find you a good gluten-free recipe, Lou. I'm the only Sorry, one. Sorry, can I cut in? in? Yes, you can, Kerry. Yes. So this is how it looks like from a hot boiling milk. And then I just add in the dough and it mix up for like 20 seconds. This, this is how it looks like. It's really, really hot. So the next tips I'm going to teach you guys is because the recipe just calls for leave a side to cool for 10 minutes. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to put in the butterfly whisk. I put it back without the measuring cup. I'll put it to five minutes without any temperature and I'll just turn it to speed two to two and a half. And this will actually, what it does is it's actually helping it to cool down ASAP instead of 10 minutes. The other thing is it actually brings in more air into the cream pastry. So you, when you eat, it's like, it's crunchy in the outside and it's like, um, how do I say? Like empty in the inside, like really, really mm -hmm. yummy. That's so now, a really good tip, Kerry. So you're saying instead of leaving it for 10 minutes, you're putting the butterfly in and you're going five minutes, speed two or speed three, just to yes. cool it down. So because it. once you are doing that five minutes, in the middle control temperature, it will pounce you because now it's sitting at 80 degree. Yeah. So once it comes down to... 60 i can add one egg by one egg so i can start now so another five minutes yeah i'll just let it that go is very, that is a great tip kerry i love that i've made these buns before but i didn't have all this cool tips when i made them okay so, yeah. what did you add into that dough so i ate two eggs and then some 500 grams uh of the of the flowers, yeah, and then and also grinded cinnamon, one and a half teaspoon of grinded cinnamon, and one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, which is I grinded by myself. Use a song yep. mix, just ten, and then grinded cloves as well, sea salt. So all I have to do is follow the recipe. It says speed three for twenty seconds, which is blend everything together, which is I find out song mix really. Um, easy to do that if you do it by your hand it took for a while it's definitely more than 20 minutes 20 seconds it's going to be a minute to do that and it's very hard to stir because it's quite dry at the moment yep and for the next step just keep the measuring cup and a five minutes needed. Very so, fun fact guys one minute of Thermomix kneading is equivalent to how many minutes of kneading? Who knows? Who's been on our classes before? It's more than three, Sandy. Five. Five minutes. So that's really cool. And no one's got time to hand knead for five minutes. Yeah. Um, excellent. Now, guys, the one tip with when you are kneading with your Thermomix is do not leave your Thermomix unattended, okay? You can see next to Ruru that Thermomix is moving around a tiny bit. And sometimes they can walk off the bench, which is not ideal. So it is just five minutes. You want to stand next to that Thermomix and make sure that it does not go anywhere. So while we're kneading, I'm actually going to head back to Esther. She's given us a little bit of information already, but I'd love for you to introduce yourself, Esther, and then you can let us know what you're cooking. Hi everybody, I'm Esther, I'm the team leader in the Bay of Plenty. Um, I've been with Thermomix for 
for two years now, um, but I've actually had one uh, for a lot longer than that. So um, I am gluten free and vegan as well. And I, one of my favorite things is just adapting any type of recipe to suit my diet. So um, tonight I'm making the hazelnut chocolate spread um, and I'm adapting it to be vegan. So. I think that's one of the things I really love about the Thermomix is that, you know, guided cooking, it's just a guide. So you can still decide to adapt things to what suits you and your family. Absolutely. Right. So we've got 50 to 90 grams of sugar. Um, I'm using coconut sugar here because it's just my preference. And then we're going to mill this. for 10 seconds at speed nine. So that milling, such a cool function in our Thermomix. And as you can see, Esther's milling uh, the sugar into icing sugar. Ruru talked a little bit earlier about milling spices from whole spices, which means they're always fresher. And you can mill things like rice into rice flour or wheat grains into wheat flour. Um, so definitely saving your time and money. Ooh, that's like powdered, powdered coconut sugar. Right, we're gonna add our toast of roasted hazelnuts here. Now I roasted these earlier. Um, I put a tray in the oven, 180 degrees, and I did them for about 12 minutes. I bet your house smelled really good. It did, it did. Mm -hmm. And then as a little tip, once they've cooled down a bit, once they're out of the oven, um, if you pop your butterfly whisk in the bowl and then put the cooled hazelnuts in the bowl and do the, I think I did 10 seconds at reverse speed three and a half, um, and it takes all the skins off them. Ooh, that's a cool tip. It was probably a little bit long or a little bit fast. Um, could have done it maybe for five seconds, but um, yeah, they, they've come out really nicely. So that's awesome. Um, adding 100 grams of dark chocolate. Did you use Whitakers? I did use Whitakers, yeah. My, my preference is for the 72% dark um, chocolate, um, but my local supermarket hasn't stocked it for so long now, so I'm down to the... Yeah, I'm going to have to send you some down. That's my favourite one, the Ghanaian one. Yeah. Um, okay, lid back on. And then we're just going to chop that at speed eight for 10 seconds. So you guys won't get to hear the power because unfortunately with Skype, when you go over a certain level of power or noise, the Skype does cut out. But I love when you can hear that power in the bowl and the Thermomix and then you hear how it changes where it very quickly grates that chocolate. Actually, I have to show you this because that's just quite amazing. It's all Ooh. rounded up together. Um, okay, now we're just going to add some cocoa powder as well. And the recipe asks for butter, but I'm using coconut oil. Um, you can, some of the recipes, there's various recipes for this particular um, recipe on Cookie Do, um, and some of them um, say use, you can use um, vegetable oil or peanut oil, and I think the peanut oil would give it a really lovely nutty, extra nutty flavour. And then 100 grams of milk, I'm using almond milk. And we're going to blend it all together. So it's going to heat it while it's mixing um, for six minutes at 50 degrees on speed three, and then we'll be ready. So this is a great, um, a great recipe. And if you want to see how to use this in other recipes, you can actually search in Cookie Do and just put hazelnut chocolate spread. There is an amazing brioche that is in like a star shape that you layer the brioche with this. Um, chocolate spread uh so yeah and uh, my kids don't know the difference between this and nutella so it's pretty good saving time saving money healthier um how long does it last esther kat's asking 
if you put, put it in sterilized um, jars? Honestly, you're supposed to keep it in the fridge, but honestly, um, it's so tasty, it won't last probably longer than a week. Um, yep. It's nice just eating a teaspoon of it. Yep. Just by itself. <laughs> I reckon a week, <laughs> a week is probably safe if it lasts that long. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, well, I'll let that cook. Um, and while that is happening, I'm going to spotlight both Kerry and Ruru. Um, so, what Ruru is doing is she's going to add the butter. Yep, so that's the dough. It's been kneaded. Yep. The dough looks pretty good, but it's still quite dry. If you want something very soft bones, we definitely need oil in it. So this is the machine already. Uh, so the cookie dough already told me like result measuring half. So while I'm doing this, I just do the two minutes kneading at the same time. That's how it's good. So add the butter in. The butter piece by piece. So while we watch Ruru do that, I'm going to um, get Kerry to tell us what she's doing. Five minutes so fast instead of just leaving it alone for 10 That's minutes. That's a great tip. So now I take out the butterfly whisk. I'll put it back without, without using any time or we just put it to a speed. So it doesn't need to um, put in any time first. We just have to put the spit on. While it's beating, we have to put one egg by one egg. So once one egg is incorporated and then the other egg in. So Good. And how many eggs is that, um, Kerry, that you're adding? So here is four eggs. Yep. So I'll just okay. put one by one. Okay. Just one by one. This would be such a mission to make if you didn't have a Thermomix because you'd have to like beat it by hand and add the eggs one at a time. What a mission. The other, the other idea is because a lot of recipe, when they call for eggs, people get, people actually get confused. Yep. What size? So yep. now I'll give you a trick. So I'll, today I'm going to put three eggs first and let's show you how does three eggs looks like and the enough egg will look like what? You know, the dough okay. that has enough egg? So Good. Second egg in. This will take around two to three minutes, really quick. So now. So this um, is chew pastry that Kerry's making and we're gonna make Easter cream nests with it, but you can actually make like eclairs as well. That's what you make yes. them out of, eh, Kerry? Yes. So now, okay, let's go back and then I'll just turn off and see what does a three eggs shoe pastry looks like. <laughs> Can you see this? Yep. This is a three eggs. Yep. It's not enough yet. Okay. Yeah, it's not enough. Yet. Some people might stop at here and say, hey, why is my egg, why is my pastry is puffing? And then yep. once I bake it, and then when I take it out, it's all slammed down. So this, you, you can see it's quite thick at the moment, very yep. thick. Okay, so it needs another egg. Needs another egg. So it's like if, because this recipe asks for accurate 220 grams of eggs. That will be around four medium eggs. So I have been sharing a lot. And some people will say, how come mine is not right? Because they use extra small eggs. Four eggs is yeah. not working. So now the third egg go in. And we are good to pipe them and bake them. So while that's happening, what you can see in the top is that Ruru is getting her dough out um, and she's doing a very cool thing. She's wiggling the dough to get it out. There we go. So all we have to do is just upset down our bowl and then just wiggling that blade at the back. And then they were all done. As mm. quickly, quick. If you need to do something else, uh, you want it to cook straight away, you have you probably can use our um, cleaning function, just say pre-clean, or you can wing, you can try to another bowl for discounted price and then just straight away swap. Okay, very easy. So I can smell the dough is fantastic uh, and the, the spice is very evenly contributed on the, on the dough. And then what we do, I'm going to make a very special version for my son. He not only likes the reason, but he loves chocolate. So it's going to be a well. So I'll put it in. Chip and raisin. 
Yeah, the raisin. And also I grated some of the, uh, peeled some of the orange skin as well. Just make some fresh nourishment. So what we put that in, easy. Very greedy, mommy. <laughs> there you go. I think this is gonna be so much fun during our school holiday time, and then oh. you know, stay together with our our kids to do it together. So, so shape the dough as a round one, and then use our thermal bag to cover it up. If I think I had a look the weather report next week. So it's getting wet and cold. So if it's in the winter time, put this in our thermal bag, thermal thermal server. It's always good to heat keep the heat and then help help the dough rise faster. Excellent. So Ru is going to pop that to one side and let it rise, and we're quickly going to watch Kerry um, piping the shoe. So show yeah. us the difference, Kerry. So it's actually like easier to come down. It's very glossy. Very, yep. very glossy. See? Yep. Very, very glossy. Very yeah, beautiful. Amazing. Yes. So, as usual, because we're making a mess, so I use a piping tea. Any kind, one M or any kind with this kind is good, you know? So, we have that beautiful nest line. So, I always find a big open hole, jar, cup, glass, anything you can find. Just put it like this so it's easier. And then just put everything in, we can pipe them. I love how you're using your large insulated tumbler. I do that as well, actually. It's a good That's tip. the best one. That's the best yeah, one. So cool. Okay, now. Okay, maybe I'll have to push it up and see. Okay, so what I do is we just pipe one out first, like a round ball. Like, this. can you go see? Yep. Might have to tip us down. Oh, yeah, move back just a tiny bit. Okay. Here we go. That's better. Yep. Yep. Good. So and then we're just gonna turn one round around them. Please overlap them, okay? You have to overlap them, overlap until here. You know oh, why? Overlap, because, yeah. Because if you don't overlap, once it bake, it bake. Oh, like flat. So you need, <laughs> yep. So you need like two circles around. Yes, like please overlap them. To make a nest. Yes. Yeah. So now, can you all see? Yep. You can use some water when you're at home. So I just use some water just to, it's just like macarons. You just have to tip them so they will come down a little. Yeah. So they won't stick to your hand. That's it. Do you and then reckon you, can... you need another circle on top of that circle? You want one more circle? I reckon put another circle to make sure that there'll be like a nest in the middle. Let's see. Okay. I'll listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're listening to me. You know heaps more than me about pastry. So this one, when you bake in the oven, it also depends on how big is your pastry. When it asks for 15 minutes, it doesn't mean this will actually cook 15 yep. minutes because the size is there. It's quite big. It's yep. quite big. And then the other tip is once you put it in for 200, uh, 200 degree, you cook for around 15 to 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, you don't, you don't open the door straight away. You, might, you can turn off the oven and leave it inside the oven for another five to 10 minutes. Good. Then you open so it won't- You don't want it to collapse. And they won't collapse. And also okay. because we are using silicon mat, silicon mat tends to mix um, bread, scones, all these a bit more moist. Where else with pastry, puff pastry or macaroons, anything with pavlova, it actually, it's a little bit wet, but don't worry about that. Just leave it in the oven, leave it on the pan. They will dry it up itself with the remaining heat. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, you pop those into the oven. I'm quickly going to bring Esther back because I think okay. she's uh, showing us her chocolate spread. Let's check it out. 
How's it looking? It's open. Oh, yeah. Is it, did, did, do you have a little lick of the spatula? <laughs> mm. I've made it before. It's really good. Yeah. And what's the trick now? How do you make a delicious hazelnut chocolate milkshake, Esther? Or a hot chocolate? Um, oh, a good tablespoon of that and some milk. Yeah. Um, Instead of cleaning your bowl, course, just put yeah. like, yeah, 200 grams of milk for one or more for if there's more than one of you. And if you want a hot chocolate, I'd go maybe two minutes, 50 degrees speed two, just to froth it up a little. Um, so never waste the hazelnut chocolate spread. My kids always lining up outside the kitchen when I do anything like that, because they know there's going to be a hot chocolate coming out. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Okay, right. Let's see what Ruru is doing. It looks like she's shaping some buns. Yes, it's about um, 10 to 15 minutes, even though the recipe tells you one hour. So to save your time, you don't really need that one hour at all. Sometimes for most of the doughs, I just do 15 minutes and then we can start shaping it. And then we just divide them to 12 portions. Take a bit of calculation. <laughs> all right so you guess i always weigh them because i'm so paranoid that some are going to be tiny and some are going to be huge oh yeah what you have to do every every page of recipe there's a little three dots at the corner so you just tap it and then just say wait so what do you have you can just wait each of it yeah use the scale i love that yeah, and then some people I know you have to make make sure everything is the same size. But <laughs> That's me. Yeah, if you have kids, just let them be. Just let each of them just to be themselves. Yeah. And then what I do instead of the paping the flour and the water ones, uh, I learned from Odette about this this tips about um the custard, custard custard um. I, I feel the custard is way tastier than the... Custard crosses are the best. I reckon I can't eat hot cross buns without custard crosses yeah. now. It's so... so which, yeah. which custard recipe did you use, Ruru? Is it the TM6 recipe? Yeah, the TM6 one. And I only... I, I, I doesn't use milk at all. I use the coconut milk. It smells okay. even better. So the coconut custard flavor. Custard crosses are where it's at, guys. If you haven't put custard crosses on your hot cross buns yet, you have to do it because you'll never Try. go back. So yummy. It's so good. And then also, instead of brush the blazer, I'm not making it because I want to save some time. I just use normal honey and water. The potion is one to one. So 20 grams of honey, 20 grams of water. And then just mix it. Later on, we, once we finish baking, we just brush it up. Excellent. So I'm going to let Ruru keep going with her buns and we're going to head back over to Hayley because those eggs will be boiled. Yes. Um, yep, they are well and truly um, boiled and I pop them in some cold water for a few minutes and then I've peeled them. They're not the prettiest eggs in the world, but <laughs> they will do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my second bowl because my first bowl is still quite hot from um, cooking the eggs and we don't want to be putting raw meat into a hot bowl because it'll start to cook and we don't want that. So I'm going to use my second clean dry cold bowl. And Who's got bowl. a second bowl, guys? If you have a second bowl, pop it in the chat box, say me. And if you don't have a second bowl, I reckon you need to talk to your consultant and host a cooking experience so you can get one. Some of us extra consultants have four and I constantly like, I use all of them. It seems extra, four but bowls. I do use that all of them. That is so bougie. I've got three and I thought that was bad. Well, I had five and I gave one to my mum. I was being really generous. So, you know. Um, so we're going to pop in and ask for eschalots, but I'm, I have onions. So we just got um, onion and it did ask for for um, fresh parsley, but mine has died a really sad death. So we've got dried parsley. So I'm just going to chuck all of that in there. Um, Juliana says she's got four and she's not a consultant. I kind of feel like if you have four bowls, you should be a consultant. <laughs> you should be, Clearly sure. you're passionate enough that, you know, I feel like it's a given that you're a consultant if you have four bowls. A hundred percent. Of my four, I paid for one. So yeah. you should be. Um, so we're just going to chop that for three seconds on speed seven. 
That onion chopping, eh? That's one of my favorite functions. Who's got time to ch chop onions? No one. No one. Um, so normally speed five is the chopping speed, but this um, obviously wants it quite fine to go into the um, like mince mixture. Um, so I've just scraped down the side, so it's all back at the bottom. And then um, we've got the beef here. So um, this is where the recipe differs from what I'm used to. I would normally make scotch eggs with a sausage meat, um, but this recipe calls to use beef. Um, so I put the call out to the team leaders and said, what cut should I use? So we've decided on rum. Um, and I've just gone through and cut all the sinew off. So this is like good home kill beef. So I had to do quite a bit of cutting, but that is fine. Um, so I actually sit. love mincing your own meat because the stuff you get at the butcher, I feel like it's all the like leftover bits that nobody wants. And then they just put it through the mincer. Yeah. Yeah, it's gross. It's gross. Um, so that's 600 grams of that. And then we're going to pop the lid on. And that is going to chop on speed eight for 16 seconds. Funny length of time, 16 seconds. I don't think I've ever seen a recipe go chop for 16 seconds. Like why not 15? So weird. Um, so lots of people actually with more than one bowl. I love that in the chat. And uh, Lou, you are right. You have to have a second bowl. It is just a given. Like I would be lost with it. I'm too lazy to only have one bowl. <laughs> Me too. Um, so that's, it's quite mince like now. Um, so it does say at the bottom to prolong it by four seconds if it's not mincy enough, but that's pretty good. So we're gonna go with that. So I've just scraped it back down to the bottom. Um, and we're gonna add in Yep. Yes. I'm just going to stop Kerry from making the filling because I want her to make it in front of us. So Kerry, stop making that filling. She's in a hurry. Keep going, <laughs> Kerry. Um, we've got one egg that I'm going to pop in there and 15 grams of mustard. So I'm using um, Dijon mustard. And uh, 20 grams of breadcrumbs. So I um, blitzed those up earlier. And the Thermomax just using the crust ends of the bread because my kids will not eat those, so I may as well make use of them. Um, and then it says a one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, so we're just going to give it a good few whacks and estimate that one roughly. And some pepper. I have actually never had a scotch egg, I don't think, so... And I look at that look of shock on your face. I'm not sure I've had one. Has anybody else had a scotch egg? My mum used to make them out of a really old school Alison Holst cookbook, which yeah. was a really Kiwi classic. You used to microwave them and they had curry powder and like tomato sauce and barbecue and sauce and stuff in them. And they were delicious. And she hated making them because for a family of six, it took her yeah. a very long time to make enough scotch eggs for us all. Um, so this is quite different to what I'm used to. So it's going to be really interesting. You might have to make some for your mum just to thank her for all those scotch eggs she made you. She doesn't like them anyway. So <laughs> it's probably because she had to make so many for all of you. Probably. Um, so we're going to mix that for 15 seconds on speed four. I reckon, are they a Kiwi thing? Or are they, they sound like they'd be like a Scottish thing or a, I don't know, British thing. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows the origin of Scotch eggs? English, says Sarah Kay. Definitely not a South African thing. I was a South African child. We did not have Scotch eggs. I always just assume they're from Scotland because they're called Scotch eggs, but I don't know. <laughs> I could be very, very wrong. <laughs> Um, so that's our mixture all done. It's all nicely combined. Um, so it's asking me to pop that in a bowl and I'm going to divide that into six equal parts. Um, and then I will start to um, get that into some of the Scotch egg shapes. Excellent. So what you can see in the top is that Ruru is piping the custard crosses. Um, and she's doing a great job as well. Very tidy, Ruru. And now they are going to go in the oven for how long, Ruru? Or they're going to do another rise. 
I'm on mute. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, for the in the recipe, I asked the two hundred degrees. If you yeah. like a a a, a buns, you use the two hundred degrees. But I prefer the light color, and then yep. hundred. It's perfect, and twenty five minutes is perfect. And this one need to run. I am using our mixer shops uh, rose gold uh, baking tray. You don't need any of the baking uh, paper in it. It won't stick on it, and it won't make any of the mess. It's perfect. So this size is a uh, medium. So for the medium is for twelve pounds. It's perfect. I just pre made six of that, and then you can put it in the small size. Very cute. And then if you want a, a round bun, say you, you have to leave the space, make sure it's round after it rises for twice bigger and we can bake it. But if you want a, a square one, you just put them together. Makes good one by one. And then they will grow to a square one. Okay, so Rura is gonna pop those in the oven. Um, Haley is shaping. So what do you do? You grab the egg. And then you I'm just separating into six parts at the moment. Um, Diane yeah. says Scotch eggs originated in the Whitby area of Yorkshire in the late 19th century. Originally, they were not covered in sausage meat, but in a rich, creamy <coughs> fish paste before uh, before being sprinkled with breadcrumbs. Whoa. No, thank you. No, thank you. Ooh. That doesn't sound pleasant. That does not sound good. <laughs> um, so these scotch eggs are also done in like an egg flour and breadcrumb coating yep. um, so I'm just getting that ready mm, this is the sort of recipe I reckon you could get the kids involved with so they could help you with shaping them yeah, definitely. And great for like a picnic or, yeah. um, you know, if you need to take a plate because they're actually really delicious cold. So yeah. you can cook them the night before, chop them up into pieces and take them along with a salad or something. Like, I really like them the next day. So, yeah. Um, so it's asking me, this is really bizarre in great, uh, instruction, but it's actually asking me to flour one of the peeled eggs. So yeah. I'm going to roll that in flour. Mm. Nick can't say I've ever flowered an um, egg before, but we're going to go with it. Um, I always just kind of like squish it in my hand until I have like a patty and then just roll that up around until um, it's all around. And you just want to make sure that you don't leave any gaps because um, then they won't cook evenly and it'll all the egg kind of squirts out. So yeah. Give that a good squish around there. So yeah, nice and nice and even little ball. Um, and then we are going to dip it in the whisk egg. Oh, this is very messy exercise, this one. Yeah, this is why my mum made it. This <laughs> yeah, your mum's just like her. And then yeah. the did you make those breadcrumbs? Yeah, so these are the breadcrumbs I made earlier using just the ends of our bread. So I just, because awesome. um, my kids don't eat the ends of loaves of bread, I don't know why, but I will literally just collect them all, pop them in a container or a bag and keep them in the freezer. And when I have a decent amount, I will um, blitz them in the Thermomix so that I have a container of breadcrumbs for when I need them. So, or do them as I need them. So I have fresh ones if that's how, what I prefer. So that was egg rolling flour, coat in mince, dip in egg and roll in breadcrumbs and then how are you going to cook them um so it asks you to cook it in a frying pan um so you could do that um you could chuck them in the microwave especially if you have a microwave with a crisper plate they're perfect um i reckon even in the air fryer they would be perfect as well yeah, which would, wouldn't have to fry. stand there as as long would be really easy so yeah Excellent. So while Haley keeps shaping those, we'll keep her as the spotlight and we're going to add Kerry back. And Kerry, tell me what you're doing with that filling. Oh, actually, they asked me to put mm -hmm. in fresh cream to whip up the cream. So yes. I normally love to use the long life cream. Yep. Because the taste is better and it's more stabilized. The yep. stability is really good. So without putting on the timer, this is quite tricky. You have to just see how it whips and then until it's stiff. So this is how it looks like now. It's beautiful, perfect. And the problem is if you go too far, you get butter, right? So you go yes, to wash it really close. 
So this one has taken me, so I have really icy cold cream. I put them, it's easier because sometimes you just need them. I don't want to go to the, to the shop and then get, get a fresh cream and then and ended up not using them and it's just going to waste. But this is really good. I keep a lot of this for my cakes, for anything. So now it looks like this. So yep. this has taken two minutes and 46 seconds at speed three with a butterfly whisk today. So what I'm going to do now, it just tells me to put in a, in a bowl, a side. So why not? Immersive, I love it. Immersive. So the cream is really good. Mm, yum, yum. Mm, yum. So now is the easy part. So here, again, with the shoe pastry, with custard, it's really yummy. Normally, when I do this, I like to put fresh cream and yogurt, vanilla yogurt. So it's really light. And today's recipe asks for sour cream. And I'm going to try using the sour cream. So now, she doesn't need to wash. And then we go straight in. And just add in the sour cream. That's all. And again, I don't like to get big one. I like to get smaller cup, just yep. because it's simpler, easier, and I don't waste them. I like to put them in my baked potato too. So fattening. So <laughs> yummy. Dairy, it's good for you, dairy. So yummy. You're like Easter is not the time to worry about your weight, right? Yes. Not so into yeah, Just about there. So so <laughs> I get a good calculation. Like two tops is around and then sugar we need a little bit of sugar because it's only 220 grams just because it's it's stir and we need to eat sweet and yummy vanilla extract great sorry i forgot about the vanilla extract <laughs> okay yeah very really quick <laughs> all in squeeze and then Next, 20 seconds. That's all. Okay. Done. Mix with the cream. Mm. And so this is going to be the filling for those pastries. Mm, the pastry smells really good. Really good. But I mix some just now in the afternoon just to pre-mix some. So it's the pre-made ones, Kerry. The pre-made one, so I make a few shapes. This is the, the what do you call that? The original, the classic one. Ah, yeah. So I classic. cut it up because I made a bit of, I made some chocolate hot cross bun today with chocolate custard. So might as well just fill them with chocolate custard and mm -hmm. strawberry. Yeah. Yeah, so I have this. And then I've also made this. That's why I know you have to go overlap them. <laughs> make so it look. Yep. So go. So now we're going to put it in the cream and fold them together. And that's it. So easy. Mm. 20 seconds. The yeah. cream. Oh, so you're putting that with the cream and you're yes. pulling it through. And then you're going to pipe it into the nests. So it doesn't even need to pipe. It just tells you to spread it on. Oh. So I realized with this one, it actually tastes really good and really light. So yep. some people who doesn't, you know, it's gluten free. What you can do is. See, now I'm going to do it just to fold them nicely. This is actually a very nice cream, not only for shoe pastry. You can pop it for anything, for your sponge, chiffon mm -hmm. cake, yeah. even just on a chocolate muffin. This, mm. is, this actually tastes good. So let's say if we have some gluten-free people, but they love the cream, what can we do? We can just put some in. And then we can layer them up with some fruits, like a tiramisu, but cream and sour cream. Yeah. Something like this. Delicious. Mm. So we can just like, you know, just a, just an idea, just like an, a quick idea, just to let you go. Know. have the shoe, yeah. Yeah, it's like instead of just on the shoe. So now this one. So it does look like a nest. It, the, the instruction tells us to cut, just to press this in. Push it down, yeah. Yeah, putting it down. And then just to put some, spread it on. So I don't like to eat apricot, but I like peach. So I put peach on today. Awesome. 
And then now it's Fedra season. You can also put on Fedra. It is, it's unlimited ideas, which you can just put whatever you like to eat. Yum. That looks delicious. I've actually eaten these and they are incredibly delicious. So yes. Awesome. So I'm going to let you keep going with that. And we're going to go over to Lisa and Lisa's going to do our very last recipe. So Lisa, introduce yourself. This is a short one, luckily. Um, so we're going to run about five minutes over, guys. Um, and here's Lisa. I will be super quick, I promise. I am um, Lisa. Oh, there's a crying baby in the background. I am Lisa. I have a baby in the background. I um, am the team leader in the, I live in Waiofi, but I look after the Franklin, South Auckland area. And I'm gonna be making the Easter carrot cheese dip. Um, and it is really quick, like Odette said. So we're gonna start cooking. Also a really great Easter dip because it's so clever. Um, and I just, yeah, I love, I make this one every year, so fun. Yeah, so it uses red Leicester cheese, which I'd never heard of, um, and I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to um, find it, but it was just at Countdown, which was handy. So I'm going to pop in 200 grams. You're going to pop the lid on, and it's going to go five seconds speed seven, so nice and quick. Braiding cheese, so easy in your Thermomix. And then we're just going to pop it into a bowl. So we're going to set it aside. So part of the cheese goes back into the dip itself. And then we actually use um, some of it to pop on the outside as well. So just pop that in a bowl. So there we go. And then we're going to pop in some carrot because it is easter carrot cheese dip so we need some carrots <laughs> we pop in one carrot two spring onions which i've just chopped up here and then we are going to pop the lid on again and give it a chop five seconds speed five which is my favorite hello so that is perfect for chopping an onion five seconds speed five you'll see it come up quite a bit it is one of those ones that you use a lot of the time so that is what so that was a carrot and two spring onions all chopped up um, and ready to go so i'm going to give it a scrape down and then one sec i'm just going to tell my background noise to be quiet so Lisa is uh, demonstrating how you can run your Thermomix uh, business from anywhere, even when you accidentally end up at a party on a Friday night and uh, then realize you're supposed okay. to be cooking. So great thing about our business, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> so we're actually going to pop the lid back on and give it another chop, this time just three seconds. <laughs> So if you give everything a scrape down and then a re-chop, it's just going to chop it a little bit finer. So you want to scrape it down so that it's all down by the blades so that the blades can do the work for you. Into that, we're going to pop in 75 grams of that reserved cheese. Um, here we go. Baby is going to need me in a second. So lucky it's nice quick one. 500 grams of green cheese so we got a couple of bottles here and this one then we're gonna do i didn't have any dijon mustard so we're just winging it with american from the it'll be fine it'll be um better than none at all and then um, garlic powder and paprika. I also didn't have garlic powder. Now it only says um, half a teaspoon of paprika, but I'm just gonna pop a little bit extra in because it's like paprika and we're not popping in the garlic powder. Some salt, which is, yeah. Salt. 
I'm not really a, a measurer, if you can tell. <laughs> I just kind of wing um, how much I'm... A winger, a winger. A winger? You're either one or the other, aren't you? You are. Uh, so pepper. And then we're going to pop the lid back on. And it's going to combine all of those ingredients. So 15 seconds, speed three. The so Ruru, um, I think, has just been glazing her hot cross buns um, and that she's used a mixture of honey and water. Just giving them a little, yeah, that's good. You can also use orange marmalade or you can use uh, boiling water and sugar as well, just to give them that little bit of sweetness. Uh, that is what we, oh, dropped a little bit on the ground. That is what we're looking <laughs> like now. I um, My cream cheese was quite firm, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a spray. And I'm actually just going to go back on the screen. I'm not going to go um, for the full, what was it, 15 seconds. So I'll just tap on the time. I think I'll just do like another five just to make sure that everything's incorporated properly. Mm, those hot cross buns look good. Um, and then it says you want to take spoonfuls of the mixture and pop it onto a plate in a large serving dish. So I've just got this big chopping board here because I thought it'd be good we can pop the crackers on the side. Um, and we're just going to... Um, so put little dollops on in the middle and you're just basically going to shape it into a carrot. So a little bit bigger at one end, shorter at the blades. <laughs> Everyone knows what a carrot looks like. Everyone knows what a carrot looks like, <laughs> So I'm going to pop that on. This is also where children come in handy because you can get them to shape the carrot for you. Yeah, definitely. And then I'm going to, it's not my kitchen, so I don't actually know where all the cutlery is, but I might actually just wet my hands real quick. Yeah, I'd go for the hands always. I um, always find that it's just quicker. So You've washed them, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just don't tell the people here if I haven't. <laughs> It's looking right. really carrot-like. Carrot-ish. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, you're going to take some of your parsley. So just like the bunch of parsley that you get um, from the supermarket or from your garden, if you can grow it. I'm not the type of person who can grow it, so it's from the supermarket. I'm going to just break off some of the stems and pop. Just turn you a little bit more. Pop that in there like that so it looks like the um carrot tops and then Great. oh that's the downside of using your hand is now i can't go to the next step which i ought to go so you're <laughs> going to cover um the dip with the leftover cheese now top tip which i um would have liked someone to tell me beforehand is you probably want to keep your cheese in the fridge right until the last second because um it's obviously softened up with the room temperature and it has clumped a little so for me to cover it it's going to take a little bit more effort to make it look super pretty but i will get there in the end and so while lisa is carrot carrot fying i don't even know what the word is making her carrot look more like a carrot um, I am going to add the spotlights for the other girls so that they can show you uh, their finished dishes. So let me find all of them and spotlight. And who am I missing? Ruru. There we go. Right. So Esther's holding her little puddle of hazelnut chocolate spread. Look at Ruru's beautiful hot cross buns. Um, oh, Haley, show us your, oh, you've cut one open. Oh, that actually does look quite delicious. And you know what it's missing? Fish paste. <laughs> no, curry powder. Um, Lisa's working on her carrot. Now, Kerry, you've done something really cool there. Can you show us what you've done? So that is the bamboo grazing box. That is available. Yes, I the love the bamboo grazing box. So you see, this is like an Easter box. 
So I have mixed some chocolate hot cross bun with cherry brandy and also some normal hot cross bun with orange mama marmalade. And this is the sour cream that we have made. I make it into a cup, yep. gluten-free. <laughs> so, and this is the shoe with chocolate custard with strawberries. Mm -hmm. And this is the, is the pastry cream. That looks amazing. That would be such a great dessert on Easter or just for afternoon tea or whatever. That's beautiful. Yes. Um, so we are going to take some photos of these dishes. Guys, I would love a little bit of feedback just on the class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a link into the chat box. It is a Menti link. If you click on the link, it will take you to a website where you can give us some feedback. So the feedback that I'm hoping for is what did you enjoy most about this class? Um, and any suggestions for future classes. So if you just pop over there um, and just give me a little bit of feedback, I would really, really appreciate it. All you do is you click on that link and it'll take you there. Um, thank you so much, all of my beautiful team leaders for cooking for me tonight and spending this hour with me. I love you guys. I love spending time with you. I'm so pleased I get to work with you um, and yeah, like this isn't work, right? This is just fun, but it is work. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, everybody. Let me share the screen so that you can see hopefully some of the feedback. So this is what people are saying. What did you enjoy about the class? Variety, the Easter theme, good. Hopefully some more people, oh, there we go, different dishes. What else did we enjoy? Let's see. Good, Carrie's tips and tricks, excellent. Anything else? Give us some feedback. We like to hear it. Let's see. Ideas and tips. The speed. Yes, the tips. Good. Excellent. Any other feedback, guys? Oh, the passion of the consultants. That's a nice feedback. Options. New dishes. Excellent. Good. And then the next slide is actually um, some ideas for the next class. So let's see what we've got on the next one. Let me see if I can go over. Um, let's have a look. Well, I've got to get the... See if I can go to the next page. Technology, eh? There we go. Suggestions for future classes. So as a branch, we will be running these classes on the first Friday of every month. Um, so keep the first Friday open. We would love to see you again. It's always uh, such fun to cook with you guys. We are also running some virtual cooking experiences once a week. Um, and so please reach out to your consultant and uh, get the link because we'd love to have you along. We do a cookie do workshop once a month and we also do an easy essential beginner class once a month. So your consultant is always your go to so that you can get the information about these classes. So soups, school holiday baking, desserts, cocktails and nibbles. I love it. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. I definitely will refer back to them. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful Easter. Eat all of the things. Um, and we will see you next month for another class. Oh, that. Look Ooh, at let this. Me see. Oh, wow. That's the one I told you to double pot. That's, That's a big one. one. Look at this. Look at this. That's amazing. So it's out. See? It's hollow. So yeah. it means it's right. How long was that in the oven for? It was around 25, then I leave it in for 10 minutes without taking it out so it won't collapse. Beautiful. Oh. A lot of shoe to eat. Anyone want to come over? <laughs> I reckon I should come and see you quick. <laughs> see ya. Okay, team leaders, stay on for me. Everybody else, enjoy your Easter. Have a great weekend. We'll see you again.